Thank you so very much for tuning into this week's episode. Uh, you should probably like the video right now, but we're about to get into this shit. Modern Warfare 3, right? Modern Warfare 3 2023 is... I don't even know if it's going to be anticipated to be the best Call of Duty of all time. But we're, we're here to kind of talk about that. Now, I've seen a lot of leaks on it. And usually the leaks we can always say are not that helpful, right? They're, they're not really that accurate. But sometimes, you know, it's a hit or a miss. So sometimes they do get stuff right. And it really does make for a better experience when you kind of know already what you're walking into. You, either if it's going to be a, a shit minefield or if it's going to be, you know, not that terrible, right? And... From this channel, if you've watched me a few times, you know that usually it's going to be a shit minefield that we're walking into, especially after, like, Mono Warfare 3, the first one. So, we got ourselves here some Charlie Intel. We got a Charlie Intel tweet. I'll move myself over here for, for those of you that care. So, the rumors about Mono Warfare 3. It will feature uh, Mono Warfare 2 2009 maps. It'll... Have the red dots on the mini map, re reload, cancel, returns, which they already put back into, you know, the current Call of Duty. And Ninja returns as a perk, which is like gear. And perks will be gear, essentially. So, I saw a video on this the, the other day as well. We'll, we'll kind of go full screen here. Um, so, perks will be gear, right? And the piece of gear is like maybe some boots, right? And if you want, let's say... Uh, scavenger, let's say scavenger, you'll have like an extra backpack on or some kind of things of that nature. If you want to have uh, like high alert or something, you'll have like earmuffs on or a helmet or something along those lines. So perks from now on, uh, I don't know if this is just this day. This is not confirmed yet, but this might just be a multiplayer. It might just be a war zone thing. It might, it might be everything. We don't know yet. So it would make more sense if they're making like a DMZ mode where you, where you can have like a headset for a perk. Then it would be kind of more into the looter shooter type of thing. But I, I don't know if they're trying to get into that or not. Um, if they're going to keep it simple and they're just going to be, you know, like a perk e equals gear. So if you want to have high alert, then you have he a, a, a headset. If you want to make less noise, you have boots with lighter treads on them. I don't know, whatever. So that might be a thing um, versus like just having pretty much two like two defaults. So if you if you put on high alert, you have one set of earmuffs. If you don't have high alert on, then you don't have a set of earmuffs on. Or, you know, same thing with the ninja. I'm using these two examples because they're easy to follow. If you have ninja on, then you have those boots on. And if you don't have ninja on, then you don't have... You just like have a normal boot or whatever, you know, whatever your custom character... I'm going to assume that they're going to have skins and custom char characters, right? So they're going to have those custom characters possibly have those boots on or maybe something that, that they make specific. I doubt that because... Why would they do more work when they don't have to uh, about like making, you know, custom boots for, let's say, like, you know, Captain Price or something like that or soap or wh whoever your skin is going to be. Correct. So after that, now we see a war mode. So war is actually a very war is actually one of the best game modes, I think, that they had in Call of Duty, at least in my opinion. I love demolition. I loved war and there's one other one that I can't recall offhand that I really liked. A sa sabotage. Sa sabotage was actually really fun because it was just, it was one bomb and two bomb plants, and it was pretty much you had to like push the team back to go plant the bomb, and it was like a pretty much an all-out war, and the time for the sabotage was like doubled. So essentially, in what was it? Search and destroy. The time was like, let's say 20 seconds, but on sabotage, it was like 40 seconds or, or even more uh, that you had to defuse the bomb. So uh, think about sabotage if you haven't played it as demolition, but with just one bomb and you had to plant both sides. So you're, you're on you're on defense pretty much both, you know, like throughout the entire round. And there's only, I think there was only one round. Maybe there was three. It's been a while, but I think there might have been three rounds. So it was best of three. So you, if you won the first round, you won the second, then you won the game. If you won the first round, lost the second, then there would be a third round to, to, to determine the winner. Um, that was a really simple game mode that I actually really enjoyed. So I really hope that they do bring something like, like that back. Um, but war was war in. 
Call of Duty 3 was actually pretty epic. Call of Duty 3 War was essentially an all-out war, and it was it, they brought back something similar, I think, in World... In, I have to get... Call of Duty World War II, not Vanguard. I think it was Call of Duty World War II, where you had to take over the flags. So essentially, in Call of Duty 3, you had to take over flags. And there's a bunch of different stuff that is similar to this, but I, I, there was, that was the first iteration of War that I actually played. And you had to take over flags to get to the other em enemy base. I'm pretty sure Battlefield kind of does this too with Conquest. But instead of it being like random, you can't actually take over like, let's say, a flag in their base. You have to take over the current flag that's being contested. So there's, let's say, let's say there's six flags. At, uh, let's say seven, actually, because it's easier. Um, there's three flags in your base and there's three flags in their base and there's like a neutral flag. So if the other team takes over that neutral flag, then they go into your base and they start taking over the flags in your base and you have to defend, but you can take over the flag in your base first before they get there. And then it'll move back to, to that neutral point. And then you can t do the same thing to, to them. And then eventually it's like, well, you have to take over all the flags up, you know, all, all three flags into their base. And then, then you would win. But Conquest is similar. It's a more modernized type type of feeling where you can if if there's usually like flags A through F, and then it's like if if you, they take over F in your spawn, you can go take over A in their spawn and then work your way through. But like in war, it's just you can only take over one flag. But what I what I like that they did in World War Two in Call of Duty World War Two was they added different like game modes kind of within the war thing. So like some of them you had to like defuse a bomb. You had to destroy tanks. You had to move tanks to specific uh, positions, so it wasn't just taking over a flag. Um, so it was it was fun and interesting in different ways that 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 they've done it. But I'm a I am actually a very a very high advocate of what war will actually be. Right. So I I do enjoy the um the war mode in general, just not you know not like specific in specific cases. But there's a lot of different war modes that are um that you're going to see, right? So, uh, <clears throat> they do have an outbreak zombies mode. Now, see the thing, the thing that I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually kind of interested to see about this, the outbreak zo zombie mode. If this is true, is it, is it going to be good to the point of like, see, I know a lot of people liked outbreak on, on cold war. I thought it was kind. I thought it was cool at first, but then I kind of realized that it was just like a round based zombies with like an open world, like not with an open world, with a with a bigger map. That's all it really was, right? So this is this is my statement for for this. I think Outbreak in Black Ops Cold War was just a big zombie map with just rounds. That was it. That's all it really was. There, because then you kind of like. What you did was you kind of came back to the same places over and over again. Like, it's not like you would just keep going to different worlds or different places forever. Like, eventually you would just hit the same type of area again. It was just copied and pasted, right? So, there really wasn't that much thought put into that, into the zombies outbreak in Cold War that I would have liked. So, at the end of the day, I'm not really impressed by outbreak zombies, so I hope that they actually give like a real open world type of feeling. Because I'm going to be honest, Transit felt more open world than the Outbreak did. And the reason why I say that was because there was different elements within that map, within the Transit map, that actually made it feel like it was kind of free, free thinking. Where if you went into the, the smoke or the fog, things attacked you. You could go on the bus and go through the smoke or the fog and go through, you know, different states or, well, not states, but areas. And then there was the lava, which was like in certain areas and it was even in the smoke too. So there was a lot of different moving parts to transit that I felt like were really missing in an in, in outbreak. What they did was they pretty much just gave us a giant map with like objectives on it and that was it. Which is pretty much like a campaign mode, just bigger areas so you can like run around and whatever else. But it was like almost impossible not like to die. It was almost impossible to die because if you died on that 
easily. Like, you sucked, honestly. Uh, unless you were doing a challenge in a small area, like, that was, you know, that was more achievable. But it's like, if you're doing, you know, if you're doing, like, a random, like, you're just running around training zombies, it was, it was so easy not to die. So, I just feel that the outbreak mode was very underplanned and very overhyped and, and, and underwhelming, which I, I know a lot of this stuff has been that for the past few, few years, but if I do enjoy it, I'm probably going to watch videos on this of other content creators that make an outbreak zombies mode gameplay. And if that actually looks like it's interesting, I will most likely buy the game just to play the zombies, which is not healthy, by the way. I don't want I don't want anyone to agree and to be like, oh yeah, that's no, that's not a good reason to buy a fucking sixty four dollar game is because of like four zombies maps or like a zombie map or whatever. Because my curiosity is sparked is spiked now because of the outbreak zombies mode. I want to see what they're gonna do with this and if they're gonna actually bring like real feeling zombies in the modern warfare engine because like let's be honest they hopefully will would have learned from from their mistakes from vanguard because vanguard zombies were fucking terrible so outbreak zombies let's hope that they're bringing back some classic maps let's hope that they're actually giving us real because there wasn't any zombies in the other in the original Modern Warfare three there was the survival mode which i hope that they still have but uh, this could be replacing that, or it could be this. It could be like a mix match. They could have like an outbreak mode or like a zombies mode, a zombies mode, and then they have like the regular, you know, survival mode with like the juggernauts and whatever else. Um, which would be kind of cool if they if they do kind of like a mashup with it. That would be interesting to see. But I don't think they're gonna do that because that actually requires work and you know actual thought, which they don't like doing. So that's my that's my take on this. I I don't think that it's gonna be. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be worth your time, but if it is worth it, I want to play it myself and see how it is. Um, but I also, I'm actually curious what they're going to do with the perks now too, because if the perks are going to be gear, are they going to carry this over into the zombies mode? That might be an interesting thing, especially if now you have to like maybe gather gear, um, or craft gear, which would kind of be annoying, but maybe crafting gear might be a little bit better instead of having to just buy perks with, you know, points. Maybe you can just, like, keep finding resources in the, you know, the map or the area to build these things. Um, you know, that's just, this is just like, I'm again, I'm, I'm brainstorming different ideas that could be happening here. And, and it sounds like a lot of this could be possible, which is the reason why I'm kind of intrigued now. But the perks, I don't think they're going to really extend it past multiplayer if they do i'd be surprised <clears throat> especially when it comes to like warzone because a lot like you know because again they, they could do the dmz thing where like yeah you find like different gear to like make your perks better or make like just give you perks in general instead of what they have going on now which is like you go on and you have to like extract to get a perk that you start out with and then you have to extract again to get another perk i think you get like five or ten perks or whatever the hell it is I, th I think you get all the perks if you extract, but you have to extract like 10 times in a row, which is difficult. I mean, I've only been able to extract probably two two times in a, in a row. But then again, I'm not like the best player. I haven't, I don't play that that much. So a team of three people that are really good, they might be able to do that very easily. So, um, and actually a feature I realized in DMZ that I didn't realize before, if you have a full squad, you can revive people that call for help, but they won't be in your team. But you can still revive them. I saw, I saw that in a video yesterday, yesterday which, I, which I thought was interesting. That you can actually revive the person that you killed. Kind, kind of an interesting take. But but anyway. Here is uh, here's the trailer that, that they've posted so far that like you know Charlie Intel has found. No sound to it. I have the sound on. This is it. This is all that they have so so far. November 10th. I'm guessing this is 20, this is 2023. That, that's it. That's that's all that they've posted. So, I, I mean, you know, I'm thinking that they're going to really, they're going to probably make uh, an, an interesting, I, I, I hope that they're really going to make an interesting game. Uh, I, I, I don't think that, I personally don't think that it's going to be an interesting game for multiplayer and for Warzone. I think they've thoroughly, you know, juiced that cow dry, to be honest with you that cash cow dry. I think that uh, since they're going to be introducing it in a modern warfare title, zombies, they might be getting 
uh, a, like they might be doing exactly what I said that they should be doing, which is giving Treyarch the ability to do zombies, and then they focus on multiplayer. Somebody else focuses on Warzone, so that they actually give us the best product from each company. If that's the case, then Outbreak Zombies might actually be their saving grace at this point. Uh, but I, I, I thoroughly believe that Call of Duty Activision has milked the cash cow for multiplayer and Warzone so much at this point that it's like now Zombies is going to probably have to save them. Because for the longest time, the talk of the town Black Ops, the Black Ops series, was really the Zombies. Nobody gave a shit about the multiplayer. That, was, that shit was not fun. It was fun to get some of the diamond camos, but it was like miserable to play those to play those 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 games. I know a lot of you will disagree with that, and that's fine. Truth hurts. So, looking at some of the stuff here, I just want to see like what. I you know Call of Duty game with Mario Three. When Mario Kart 2 first launched, there was much speculation, a number of rumors floating around suggesting the game would be first in COD history to have a two-year cycle, meaning the world, yeah. As the year went on, though, the rumors started to die down as reports started to come out that there would be a large expansion to Mario Kart 2 and now a full-fledged premium title, which leaks heavily indicate will be a, will be called Mario Kart 3, developed by Sledgehammer Games. So they're going to be developed by Sledgehammer Games, okay? They are good. They've done a lot of, they've done a lot of good stuff, um, Sledgehammer and Infinity Ward. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm curious to see what this outbreak will come. I enjoyed the Advanced Warfare Zombies, which was a sledgehammer title. Um, I enjoyed, I enjoyed uh, World War II Zombies. I don't remember if that was sledgehammer or not. I think that was, I think that was a sledgehammer, also also a sledgehammer title. I know a lot of people hated those zombies. That like, like oh, the World War II Zombies were the worst. And I'm like, nah, not really. So... I'm going to say that, you know, this, this is, uh, this, this is going to probably be a good, this is going to be a good stepping stone for, for them to see if this is going to be worth buying their game or not. Cause I feel like that, I feel like that there's going to be a lot of, uh, speculation w before this com comes, comes out. And the, the problem is, is that there might be too much hype around it, which is, I think Call of Duty is one, one of their biggest uh, downfalls is, is the hype that not only content creators create, but also the hype that they create. Um, as, as, as I've said in the past, I don't think anything is a Call of Duty killer besides Call of Duty. Call of Duty is the only thing that can kill itself. That's the God honest truth. Call of Duty killing itself is is pretty much spot on. You're never going to find a game that, that can destroy itself more than Call of Duty because... It just, you'll just, you'll, you, the problem, the problem that I, that, that I see with this, with this game releasing is one, it's, it's feeding off of nostalgia again, Modern Warfare 3. A lot of people loved Modern Warfare 3. And I'll, I will say this again, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, the, those original games were the peak of Call of Duty. That era was the peak. Now, the reason why I say that was because that was when Call of Duty really hype they just they went from this growth to this growth that's what happened even probably steeper like this and then now they're like this and then they're, they're gonna start doing this okay the reason why i say that is because these games are their hottest topics and they're remaking them again model Warfare for 2019 model Warfare for two now they're doing model Warfare for three they're just redoing these titles for nostalgia and because they were the biggest titles a lot of people say that the <coughs> that Black Ops 2 was the best game. Now that might be true, so you might eventually see a Black Ops 2 reboot. So what are we really doing here, right? The cycle just keeps continuing. Now are we going to keep buying these crappy games or are we going to are we going to stop, right? That's the real question here. That's my question to you. Modern Warfare 3, the new Modern Warfare 3, I feel is going to be another nostalgic cash grab, but if they are willing to do something different with the outbreak zombies, this will save the call of duty franchise. If they're willing to take DMZ to the next step and maybe even implement it into this game, that might bring them and save them on, on another level. But if they're just going to put out the same trash that they do all the time, the same war zone, the same multiplayer, it's just going to be boring. It's going to be just another Call of Duty. 
and you'll see people are going to start getting wiser to it. Some people that are watching this may, may, may not, and some people will, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm one of those people that, that are wiser to it. So what I'm going to do, and I, and I suggest that you do the same, watch the videos of people playing these games. Watch the zombies. Let them tease the zombies. Watch the zombies. Don't buy into the hype of the teasers. Go and actually watch people once the game comes out play the zombies game. Watch live streamers do it in real time. You, that you can get the real feeling of playing the game by watching somebody else play it. And I'm not talking about you know again I'm not talking about the little teasers that they do or giving these uh, these these streamers early access to like zombies. That's all trash. They're all just gonna they're they're sponsored. They're not gonna give you a real answer. The the smaller streamers that actually get to play the game and actually see the game in action. Those are going to be the people that are, that are, that are going to give you the real answers. You're not going to get them from Tim the Tatman and people like uh, uh, of that size. You may get some, re you may get some re realism, but I'm going to tell, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. It's just going to be another, you know, oh yeah, like you know, hype it up, have fun, blah blah. blah. Like, but it's like in reality, they're probably not really ha having fun. Like Tim doesn't play zombies. He doesn't. That's not his thing. So them giving him early access to zombies was just stupid. They've done that before, by the way. They gave Tim the Tatman and his friends access to zombies. Those guys don't play zombies. So it's like, what what the hell do they actually know?